this is the living room, this is the lounge, etc. Because that would be pretty boring. I'm sure nobody would be interested in that. Shut up, Oscar, if you don't mind. Hi, welcome to Photo Insurer. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Thought I'd give you a tour of the house, but not just a tour of this is the bedroom, this is the lounge, this is the kitchen, because I'm sure nobody would be interested in that. But I thought I'd show you around some of the problems you might get if you buy a Spanish built house. We've been here four years, or three and a half years actually, and I've had to do more house maintenance since we've been here than I did in the previous 17 years we owned houses in the UK. So we'll start off with my current project. We've had quite a bit of rain lately and we've been getting water running down the wall near the front door, both on the outside and on the inside, which is which is causing this. And also this. So I had to investigate and we actually have two of these which are water spouts because we have a flat roof there so the water just cascades off of those well there was one there and that's where as you can probably see that's where all the water's been coming out so I took it out and this is what I found It's completely rotted here, where it went into the wall. Wonderful Spanish building. You build a water spout out of a material that absorbs water and rots. Very sensible. So here's wonderful Spanish building point number two. This, believe it or not, is the mains water feed to the house. The meter is just over there, the other side of the wall, and it just runs along the ground, excuse me, Jensen, there it is, it runs, it runs here over the ground, around here, and disappears that way. So the water gets hot when the sun shines on it, and it's obviously not protected. Anyway, last year I was removing a bush, and I'll show you where that was. I dug a big bush out here and I was digging this over after I got it out and I came across a load of water suddenly when I was using the garden fork and it turned out that the I'm left on the surface now this is the mains water feed to the house and it was about two inches under the ground it runs around the pool and goes into the house over the back there how was I to know? You know? In England that would have had to have been about 18 inches deep. Brilliant, isn't it? Excuse the dog. When we were refurbishing the house, making the change we wanted to do, we turned the, what was a shower room, in, into an ensuite for the main bedroom. And we wanted to obviously change the floor tiles and everything else in there. But when we raised the floor tiles up, the floor started coming away with it. And the reason for that was the concrete slab, if you can call it a slab, was less than an inch thick. <laughs> Incredible. It just it was an inch thick, half an inch thick in places, so it just came up with the tiles. And no doubt it's like that in other parts of the house, but uh, <laughs> we haven't changed the tiles in some parts. So we had to uh, dig it all out and put a proper six or eight inch slab in there before we could carry on. A couple of years ago I was turning this into a nice bit of garden Well, it was sort of getting there until Oscar decided to start digging all the plants up but anyway I was digging here fortunately with a garden fork not with a spade and I don't think I'll be able to find it now because I've buried slightly deeper but I came across something and when I had a look at it it was an electric cable. It's the mains electric cable that feeds the house. It was six inches under the ground. It just runs into the house there and runs six inches across the garden to the junction box. 
how dangerous is that? I could have put a, a shovel through there and been electrocuted. And a more wonderful Spanish workmanship. Sure, we don't get as much rain here as you do in places like England, but we do still get some. So you'd think they might use some common sense when they build houses and put a damp proof course in, but oh no. If you said to a Spanish builder, have you put a damp proof course in? He wouldn't have a clue what you're talking about, I'm sure. Because you end up with things like this. On the inside of the walls, you get rising damp. And the paint and a bit of a plaster peels away. So it's a constant job to repair it. And when you look at the actual house itself, basically it's two gabled end wings joined together in the middle by a flat roof section. And I'm sure that the architect designed it to look something like this, with the two ends parallel and right angles everywhere. But what the Spanish builders actually built was something like this. One wing protrudes further out than the other wing. Neither wing is parallel to the other wings. So the flat roof section in the middle just joins the two together. There's virtually no right angles anywhere in the house. Uh, if you can see by the different angles we've had to lay the tiles here. If you showed a Spanish builder a builder square, I'm sure he'd say, what is it? Is it a boomerang? Because they certainly don't know what 90 degrees is, that's for sure. Well, I hope you found a few of these interesting. Perhaps if you're going to buy a house in Spain, particularly here in Fuerteventura, you'll watch out for these sort of things when you're going around and looking. And we'll see some of the things you just can't find until you move in. you just got to hope for the best. But anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos. Please click like down below. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.